Your faith will make you well. Your faith will promote your business. Your faith will give you breakthroughs. It is your faith that determines. The words we speak show our faith. Believe what your God is saying. Because your God is saying something. in God's presence. I welcome you to a new season in your life. Somebody say amen. I promise you'll be starting a new teaching series. Learning and growing in Christ. Growing in Christ is the most important thing. That's why we're in church. Besides other things, we are in church to be nurtured to grow in Christ. We're in church for the purpose of being matured in our walk with Christ. We are not supposed to remain as babies in the Lord. We are supposed to progress to a level of maturity. That's why this series, I consider it one of the most important I've ever taught. And I pray that you not miss any Sunday uh, as we go through this teaching. So we are taking part one today and we are focusing on understanding spiritual growth. We read from Hebrews chapter 5 beginning verse 12 all the way to chapter 6 verse 2. Mstari wa 12 hadi mlango wa 6 mstari wa 2. Chapter 5, we read from the NIV translation. And then chapter 6, the two verses we read from New Living Translation. Mlango wa 5, ni tasoma kutoka tafsiri hiyo na mlango wa 6 kutoka tafsiri nyingine. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Kwa maana iwapasapo kuwa walimu, maana wakati mwingi umepita. Mnaitaji kufundishwa na mtu mafundisho ya kwanza ya maneno ya mungu. Nanyi mmekuwa mnaitaji maziwa wala si chakula kigumu. That's a call to grow up. Huo ni mwito wakukua. You have been long enough umekaa sana in your journey with Christ. Katika mwenendo wako By na Kristo. By this time, Kufikia wakati huu, you should have matured to a level of teaching others. Unapaswa kuwa umekuwa katika upeo wa kufunza wengine. You have understood enough to be a teacher to others. Umeelewa vya kutosha ili uweze kuwa mwalimu kwa wengine. Say, look where you are. Nasema jiangalieni mahali mlipo. You, you are still at the elementary level of knowing God's word. Bado uko katika mafundisho ya misingi ya kulijua neno la Mungu. You say you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. Sema mnahitaji mtu kuwafunza mafundisho ya misingi tena na tena. They have been teaching it but you have not caught it. Wamekuwa wakiyafunza lakini hamjashika. It's not showing in your life. Haidhihiriki katika maisha yako. This understanding is not reflecting in the way you are living. Ufahamu huu hauonekani katika mwenendo wa maisha yako. How did he know they are not they are, they are, they are not yet mature? Alijuaje hawajakoma? What they have been taught? Kwa wale aliyofundishwa? How they were living? Jinsi walivyokuwa wakiishi? Was not consistent. Ilikuwa haiendani. Now verse 13. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Kwa maana kila mtu atumiae maziwa, hajui sana neno la haki, kwa kuwa ni mtoto mchanga. Now milk there describes a basic level of understanding of God's word. Maziwa pale inaashiria ile uwepo wa kimsingi wa kulifahamu neno la mungu. What he calls elementary truths. Yala mbaya naisha. It's a milk level. Nile, uh, upewa maziwa. 
And one of those things that you, you, you see in baby Christians is failure to understand righteousness. Na moja wapo uh, ya wale ambao unaona katika wa Kristo wachanga ni kukosa kulifahamu kweli ya Kristo. Then they get busy trying to become righteous. Alafu wanajishughulisha kukua wenye haki. They engage in what we call self righteousness. Wanajiweka katika ile kujiweka wenye haki. If I do this I know God will accept me. Nikifanya hivi najua Mungu atanikubali. So that's self righteousness. Hiyo ni uh, wenye haki wa kibinafsi. Because righteousness means you have been accepted by God. Kwa sababu wenye haki inamaanisha umekubaliwa na Mungu. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Kwa sababu ya imani yako ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Now move on to verse 14. Songa katika mstari wa 14. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Lakini chakula kigumu ni cha watu wazima ambao akili zao kwa kutumiwa zimezoezwa kupambanua mema na mabaya. So solid food represents an advanced level or a mature level of understanding of God's word. Chakula kigumu kinaashiria kiwango kikuu ya ufahamu wa neno la Mungu. There are basic truths and the advanced truths. Kuna kweli za kimsingi na kuna kweli za upeo wa juu. Those who have done ma- everybody has done mathematics in school. Kila mtu amefanya hisabati shuleni. It keeps on advancing. Inazidi ikikua. It the same mathematics. Nani hisabati ile ile tu. We are doing some math with my son I ask him I said okay negative number there is no square root for a negative number. Niko anafanya hisabati na mwanangu anambia hakuna uh, njia ya uh, uh, kutatua I don't know hii. square Kiswahili atasemaje. <laughs> Mungu amsaidie. Now at the level at higher levels, uh, katika kiwango cha juu, there are square roots for negative numbers. Uh, kuna njia za uh, kutatua hisabati hizo. So there is a higher truth. Kuna kiwango cha juu even in our knowledge of Christ. Hata katika ufahamu wetu wa Kristo. And what he has done for us. Na yote aliyotutendea. Now let's move on to uh, chapter 6 we read from the New Living Translation verse 1 and 2. Tusonge katika mlango wa 6 na soma tafsiri nyingine. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about who? Christ again and again. Kwa sababu hiyo tukiacha kuyanena mafundisho ya kwanza ya Kristo tena na tena. Let's stop. Tuwache. We have been on this for too long. Umekuwa hapa kwa muda sana. On the basic teaching about Christ. Kwa zile kweli za kimsingi kuhusu Kristo Yesu. So the subject is Christ. Ah uh, uh, chanzo pale ni Kristo. But there is a basic level of understanding. Lakini kuna kiwango cha kimsingi cha kuelewa. And there is a higher level of understanding. Na kuna kiwango cha juu cha ufahamu. So let's stop going over the basic teaching about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Tukaze muendo ili tufikie utimilifu katika ufahamu wetu. That gives us a hint about spiritual growth. Inatupatia uh, dhana kuhusu kukua kwa kiroho. It's about maturing in our understanding. Kukua katika ufahamu wetu. Understanding of what? Kufahamu nini? Of Christ. Kumfahamu Kristo. And what he has accomplished for us. Na yote aliyotimiza kwa jilie. We begin somewhere we understand. Tunaanza kwa kufahamu. To, to be born again. Kuzaliwa marabili. We understood he died for our sins. Tulifahamu alikufa kwa jilie. And go raising from the dead. Na mungu alikufuwa kutuwa kwa wafu. For our justification. Kwa uesabiwa haki. And kwe. whosoever believes in him. Na yote ya muaminie. Is born again. Amezaliwa marabili. Is justified. Amesabiwa haki. Praise the Lord. Bwana so sikiwe. it is growing in our understanding. Ni kukua katika ufahamu wetu. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. Tusiweke misingi tena kwa kuzitubia kazi zisizo za uhai na wakuwa na imani kwa Mungu. Now verse 2. Mstari wa pili. You don't need further instruction about Baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Na mafundisho wa mabatizo, na kuwekea mikono, na kufufuliwa wafu, na hukumu ya milele. So basically we are seeing here we need to go on to maturity. Yani kwa kimsingi tunawana hapa, tunapaswa kuzidi katika ukomavu. In our understanding. Katika ufamu wetu. Of the subject. Wa achanzo. And the subject is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Chanzo pale ni Kristo Yesu, mwana wa mungu. And what he has done for us. Na yote aliotenda kwa jilietu. So that we are looking today at understanding spiritual growth. Tunangazia leo kufahamu, kukua, kiroho. Everything that is growing is usually changing. 
kila kitu kinapokuwa huwa kinabadilika everything you can think of kila chochote kile unaweza kufikiria that is growing ambacho kinakuwa is usually changing kawaida inabadilika so in spiritual growth katika kukua kwa kiroho what is it that changes ni nini kinachobadilika the change is the growth mabadiliko ni ukomavu na spiritual growth is not our body that changes kukua kiroho si mwili wetu unaobadilika is not our spirit that change si roho zetu zinazobadilika our spirit is a new creation roho uh, wetu ni kiumbe kipya is perfected nitimilifu is righteous already ina wenye haki is already holy tayari iko utakatifu created that way iliumbwa hivyo let's look at Ephesians 424 Tuangalie wa Efeso 4:24 Put on your new nature created to be like God truly what righteous and holy Mkavae utu upya ulioumbwa kwa namna ya Mungu katika haki na utakatifu wa kweli Our new man is righteous and holy created that way Mtu wetu mpya ni mwenye haki na mtakatifu aliumbwa hivyo We will never become better Hatuwezi kuwa bora zaidi. You never grow in your spirit. Hauwezi kuwa katika roho yako. But spiritual growth is growing in your understanding. Na kukua kiroho ni kukua katika ufahamu wako. Of what has already happened to your spirit. Wa yote yaliyotendeka katika roho yako. Praise the Lord. Bwana Something spirit. has already happened to us. Kuna kitu tayari kimetutendekea. But our minds are not informed. Lakini nia zetu hazijapashwa. What has happened to us spiritually cannot be understood through sense knowledge kile kilicho tutendekea kiroho hakiwezi kuelewekwa na nia zetu the mind is informed through the five senses nia zetu uh, zinaelekezwa kutokana na hisia zile tano if it is hot i can tell through the senses kama ni moto naweza jua kupitia hisia when it comes to what has happened to us inapokuja kwa yale ambayo ametutendekea what god has done for us yote ambayo mungu ametufanyia we cannot perceive that through our senses Hatuwezi dhania hizo kupitia nia zetu. It comes through revelation knowledge. Inakuja kupitia ufahamu wa ufunuo of the word of God. Kwa neno la Mungu. That's how we will find out that actually we are a new creation. Hapo tutatambua hakika sisi ni kiumbe kipya. Now we need to grow in that understanding. Sasa tunapaswa kukua katika ufahamu huo. So everything growing is changing. Chochote kinachokuwa daima hubadilika. But in spiritual growth lakini kukua kiroho it is our mindset that changes ni nia yetu inayobadilika our mindset ni nia yetu mindset means our habitual way of thinking ni nia yetu ni ule mwenendo wetu wa kuwaza about something kuhusiana na kitu everyone here has a mindset kila mtu hapa kuna nia about yourself kuhusu wewe binafsi what you think you are unavyofikiria jinsi who you think you are ama wewe ni nani What you think about even Christ? Unachofikiria kuhusu Kristo. What you think about God? Nafikiria kuhusu Mungu. Everyone has a, a, a mindset even towards others. Kila mtu akona nia hata kwa watu wengine. And you respond based on that mindset. Na unaitikia kulingana na nia hiyo. When it is your mindset, you respond without thinking. Kama ni nia yako unaitikia bila kufikiria. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. It's an established position of how you see it. Ni sehemu iliyostawishwa kulingana na unavyoona. In spiritual growth is the believer's mindset that changes progressively. Katika kukua kiroho ni nia ya muumini inachokuwa kwa mwendo. Your way of thinking which is a habit. That's Jia, how you think every time. Jia yako ya kuwaza ambayo ni tabia hivyo ndivyo unafikiria wakati wote. Even about yourself. Hata kuhusu wewe binafsi. You are in Christ. Uko ndani ya Kristo. But there's how you think about you. Lakini una jinsi unavyowaza kujihusu wewe mwenyewe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And what you are calling a mindset. Na kile ambacho tunaita the that, mind is set. Inamaanisha nia tayari imewekwa. Concerning you the mind is set somewhere. Kulingana na wewe binafsi nia tayari imekitwa. Concerning God according to you your mind is set somewhere. Kuhusiana na Mungu juu yako nia yako imewekwa mahali fulani. Concerning your situation. Kulingana na hali yako. Or your circumstances. Ama hali yako. Or your condition. Ama ile hali ulionayo. Your mind is set somewhere. Nia yako imekitwa mahali. And where your mind is set, na mahali nia yako ilipokitwa, your beliefs are shaped that way. Ah, uh, imani yako imewekwa hivyo. And you move that way. Na unasonga hivyo. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I say praise the Lord. Nasema Bwana asifiwe. So the mind is usually set based on the renewal of the mind. Nia kawaida huwa imewekwa kulingana na kuhuishwa kwa nia yako. When your mind is renewed to something, 
It establishes a new mindset. To renew means that your mind now has another information, another knowledge about that thing. That's why the mind is renewed to something. So in spiritual growth, is a progressive renewal of our minds to revelation knowledge from the word of God. It's progressive. But your mind is being changed. Changed to knowledge from the word of God. Revelation knowledge. For example, if you are born again, you are a new creation. You will never know that through your senses. Your mind has to be renewed to it. To a point point when you think about you, you think I am a new creation. That becomes your habitual way of thinking. I am a new creation. This ought not to happen to me. I am a new creation. This ought not to be my portion. I am a new creation. This ought not to happen to me. So revelation knowledge is knowledge that cannot be verified through our senses. You cannot confirm it. You receive it from the word of God. You renew your mind to it. When your mind is renewed to revelation knowledge, it establishes a mindset. As far as that matter is concerned, your mind is set somewhere. May your mind be set on God's word. That's why Paul says, think on these things. Think on these things. Focus on these things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So mind renewal through the word of God establishes a mindset. That means that's how you think. You know I am a new creation. Praise the Lord. Those who believe there is a generational curse following them. They have not grown in the understanding. That you are brought into Christ. You are a new creation. You have no past. So there is no generation. Praise the Lord. You are a brand new person. With connection to Christ. Actually, the Bible says you are a seed of Abraham. And Abraham is blessed, is not cast. So when your mind is renewed to that truth, you will never believe there is any generational curse which is the reason why you are not making it. Your mindset will shape your beliefs or your belief system. Which usually is what drives your life. Everyone here is driven by what they believe. And what they believe has been established by a mindset. And that mindset is coming from their mind having been renewed to a certain knowledge. So in spiritual growth, it is our minds being renewed to revelation knowledge from the word of God. Spiritual growth is a journey. It's not a journey of becoming. It's a journey of finding out who we have become in Christ. And then renew our minds to it. Praise the Lord. And that makes us to live a life that corresponds to what we have had or received from God. Timothy chapter, uh, first Timothy chapter 2. Give us verse 3 and 4 from King James translation, the New, New Living Translation. First Timothy 2. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. 
Verse 4, who desires all men to be saved, and then what? And to come to the knowledge of what? The truth. After being born again, there is a journey of knowing the truth. The truth is revealed knowledge. It's about what has happened to us in Christ. Now that we are in Christ, who are we? What manner of people are we? We can't know Christ lives in us except through revelation knowledge. We can never feel it. How many believe Christ lives in them? But I tell you, many of us don't think so. Now, there are two things. There's what the Bible says and there's how, what, how you think. And how you think is influenced your mindset. Praise the Lord. Christ lives in me, but I don't think so. I won't tell anyone that. But I will join everyone to make the confession. I will join everyone say Christ lives in me. But in my mind, I don't think so. This is how I think. I'm all alone. If I think Christ is in me, I will never think I'm alone. You can't think God lives in you and think that you're alone. But do you know how many times you felt you're alone? You faith, Mungu amekuacha. Unasema Mungu amekuacha. Kristo anasema Mungu ameniacha. Anatafuta jinsi vile Mungu atarudi. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. So there is what has been revealed, what has happened to us. Kuna kile ambacho kimetendeka kwa ajili yetu. Must become inapaswa kuwa what we think about us. Vile tunavyowaza kujihusu sisi wenyewe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Shout hallelujah. Bwana sauti hallelujah. After being born again there is a journey of knowing the truth. Knowing what has happened. Knowing who we have become. So we don't engage in fruitless labor of trying to become. Knowing what we have. So we don't continue searching for what we already have. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. The Lord Jesus said, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know will set you free. It will free you. You shall know the truth if you continue in God's word. So, after salvation, there is a journey of knowing. I'm saying it's a kuhu. journey of finding out what has already happened to us in Christ. And when we find it, tukipata, we renew our minds to it so that it can become our practice. Praise the Lord. So we have renewal of mind to something. And that something is the revelation knowledge of what has happened to us. There are two elements of spiritual growth. Two elements of spiritual growth. And number one is the content. Ya kwanza ni yale aliyomo the content yale aliyomo that uh, represents the spiritual meal ambayo inawakilisha for spiritual growth ile uh, dhana ya kiroho ya kukua kiroho in growing up spiritually kukua kiroho there are two things kuna mambo mawili pa i'm calling them two elements naita vipengele viwili the first one is the meal ya kwanza ni the food chakula the spiritual food the right food Chakula cha for sawa. spiritual growth. Chakukua kiro. The second one. Ya pili. I will discuss the first one. Let me just mention the second one. Itaeleza ya kwanza, ya pili. The second one is the process. Ya pili ni ule the second one is the process. Ya pili ni ule the process represents what we do Mwenendo kile tufanyacho. with the meal or na the food na chakula icho. so as to produce the growth. Praise the Lord. 
Number one is the content of the food. The spiritual meal that brings about spiritual growth. The second thing is the process. What we do with what we have been taught to bring about the renewal of our minds. To bring about a change of our mindset. But these two things are important. If you must grow spiritually, you must have the right spiritual meal and then engage the process. So let's look at the spiritual meal. Now this, this will be the core of the teaching, so I'm just introducing. Today I will focus on the process, but let me just say something about the spiritual meal. I'm focusing on the process so that as we begin now looking at the spiritual meal, you will be receiving and engaging the process. I'm not going to teach the process at the end. Then what will you do with what I'm teaching? Because what I'm teaching, you are supposed to engage the process and produce the change. The change which equals the growth. Praise the Lord. The content. Pastors are the one entrusted. Let me call them ministers of the gospel. Are the ones God has entrusted to feed his flock so that they can grow. Praise the Lord. Ministers of the gospel are the ones who have been given the responsibility of receiving a message from God to feed God's people so that they can grow in their understanding. Understanding about themselves in Christ. If I'm in Christ, I know I am this manner of man. I have understood. It has become my way of thinking. And there are certain things I do not permit in my life because of whom I found out I am in Christ. I'm not necessarily praying sometimes. But sometimes, I'm just, this is not my portion. And that settles the case. Remember, God is able to do exceedingly abundant above what we ask in prayer or what we think in our minds. Ephesians 3.20 So this is how I'm thinking in my mind and God's power is working for me. Just the way I'm thinking. I know I am in Christ. I know God lives in me. So this cannot happen to me. I'm not even praying. I'm confirming who I am. And declaring because of who I am, this cannot happen to me. If you are born again, you are called, you are a favored person. You have God's favor and the favor of men. That is without asking for it. Praise the Lord. Without asking for it. But here you are. You are called to be a favored So when you talk like that, the way you are thinking has not been changed by the truth that you have been taught or you may, you may not have been taught. Praise the Lord. It's not about prayer everything. There are some things that will not happen because of how you are thinking. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. According to his power that is working in you already. That is working in the believer already. Today a new you is emerging. I say today a new you is emerging. Who will not experience certain things? Because of who you have understood that you are. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. So let's briefly look at the content. And I was saying the content is usually is ministers of the gospel who receive it and feed the flock of God. Praise the Lord. Now this could be a local church pastor. 
How a host of pastors online on social media. Now it's up to you to reach a level of discernment to know that this spiritual meal is corrupted. And this one is pure for my growth. As it says in 1 Peter 2 verse 2. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. As newborn babes, don't drink every milk they bring you away. Because there is a lot of impure spiritual milk. And impure spiritual milk won't bring about growth. Let me say this very boldly. Motivation talk is good, but it cannot grow someone spiritually. It can build you up for success. Motivational talk is not scriptural. You know it's not scriptural. Just principles. Principles of success. Principles of this. Principles of that. Through those principles, you may not find out who you are in Christ. You may not find out what has happened to you now that you are born again. You may know how to succeed. But you may not find out who you are. What happened to me in Christ? So this content we receive from ministers of the gospel. And also through our own personal study of God's word. Our own level of diligence matters. We receive it from them. Some just here don't receive. Those who receive keep it. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. They hear and keep it. Some hear and leave it in their notebook. Because the place to keep is not in your notebook. They keep it in their heart. Praise the Lord. They have heard. They have received it and kept it. Because what you keep is what you work. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Ask your neighbor, having heard the word, what do you do? Having heard, having written in your notebook, having recorded on your phone, having received a soft copy of the message on WhatsApp, what do you do? Having heard, what do you do? Because you can be hearing, but you are not, the pastor is feeding, but you are not receiving. Chungaji anawalisha, lakini upoke. Unalisha, lakini huli. It's very possible. Praise the Lord. Having heard the word, with a noble and good heart, they keep it. Give us the New Living Translation. Give us the New Living Translation, verse 12, and then you take us verse 15. Let's look at verse 12. Verse 12. The seed that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from where? Take it away from their hearts. They go home empty and prevent them from doing what? So they don't get to believing even though they have heard. They don't arrive at believing the word which is the end believing what you have heard. Because what you believe is what produces results. Prevent them from believing and being saved or being healed. Now verse 15. And the seed that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people just like your neighbor or yourself. Good-hearted people who hear God's word and do what? They cling to it. Not cling to your notebook. Siku, no. Siku lako they cling to it and patiently produce a huge harvest. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. 
Ministers of the gospel are entrusted with the responsibility of feeding the flock of God. Providing the right spiritual meal for their spiritual growth. So you need to design. You have your local church pastor whom you must be the main one feeding you. Then of course you are not limited to that one only. There is a host of other ministers of the gospel online on uh, TV programs on Facebook on WhatsApp kuna wachungaji wengine wengi pia katika mitandao ama katika runinga that you must you must discern what they are saying whether it is the right meal for your growth ambao unapaswa kutambua kama ndicho chakula cha kiro cha kukua katika kiro 2028 can we read that as we move on matendo ya mitume mlango wa 20 mstari wa 28 so guard yourselves and God's people feed and shepherd God's flock his church purchased with his own blood over which the holy spirit has appointed you as what elders or overseers jitunzeni nafsi zenu na lile kundi lote nalo ambalo roho mtakatifu amewaweka ninyi kwa waangalizi ndani yake mpate kulilisha kanisa lake mungu alilolinunua kwa damu yake mwenyewe kwa hivyo wachungaji ndio wanalisha kanisa lake mungu kwa madhumuni ya kuwa wakomae katika ufahamu wao wa kristo praise the lord Shout aloud amen. Sauti ya mina. Am I feeding you well? Je, nawalisha vyema? And are you feeding? Na je, unali. You answer for yourself. Unakula jijibie hiyo. Praise the Lord. Bwana sifiwe. So to to uh, to be to to receive means you have kept it. Kupokea inamaanisha umeifadhi. And it's in your heart you keep it. Na iko ndani ya moyo wako umeifadhi. You are clinging to that truth. Umeikumbatia kweli hiyo. So the content here in summary is the revelation knowledge. Yaliomo haya kwa kifupi ni ufahamu wa the word of God kutokana na neno la Mungu more precisely from the gospel of Christ kutokana na injili ya Kristo Yesu and from this revelation knowledge kutokana na ufahamu wa funuo we get to find out or to discover who we have become tunapata kutambua sisi ni akina nani so that our journey of growth is not really becoming we are not becoming ili safari yetu ya kiroho isiwe kutaka kukua we are discovering who we have become tunatambua tumekuwa kina nani renew our mind to it tunafanywa upya nia yetu so we have a corresponding mindset tunania inayolingana that begins to drive our lives ambayo inaanza kusukuma maisha yetu that begins to drive our lives ambayo inaanza kusukuma maisha yetu it determines what manner of people we are manifesting daily inatufanya tuwe si ni watu wakina nani the day you believe no let me say let, let me not use the word believe Wacha nisitumie neno hili. The day you think God lives in me. Siko ambaye utawaza kwamba Mungu anaishi ndani yako. You will change how you how you respond to issues around you. Utabadilisha namna ya vile unavyoitikia mambo. The day you reach to a place. Ile utafikia kiwango fulani. Where what you think about God. Ambapo kile unachowaza kuhusu Mungu. Is in line with what the scripture say. Kinalingana na maandiko. You will respond differently to issues of your life. Utaitikia tofauti katika mambo katika. So we have the content kuna yale aliyomo which is the meal for our growth ambaye ni chakula ya let me take an example here okay take us to galatians chapter 1 uchukue mfano hapa i move first chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 wa galatia mlango wa kwanza 6 na 7 additionally about content let me just read that passage acha nisome fungu hili this content is you not know, some new message one man of god has just discovered mambo haya si ati ujumbe mpya ambayo mtu wa Mungu amesema It's a revelation that was delivered to founding apostles and prophets and is written to the church as letters Ni ufunuo ambao uliwekwa ndani ya manabii ambao umeandikwa kama nyaraka kwa kanisa It's not Islam. a new teaching that has come in town Si mafunzo mapya ambayo yamekuja mjini That if I bring soil from Israel and Ama, you buy it from me and Ama, you go and pour in your land Kwani kileta mtoto double, double Israel, harvest na ukienda kumwaga katika shamba lako utavuna pour around your business premise Ama, business breakthrough utapata upenyo wa kibiashara that's not the revelation given to the apostles hiyo sio ufunuo uliopewa mitume the revelation knowledge given to their founding prophets and apostles ufahamu wa ufunuo ambao ulipeanwa kwa uh, mitume na wale manabii now look at galatians chapter 1 verse 6 galatians 1:6 galatia 1:6 i am sure this this was uh, what is called the Galat- galatian heresy after paul preached to them some other people came and preached a corrupted gospel and right. distorted the the faith of the people now he says i am sure that you are turning away so soon from god who called you to himself through the loving mercy of christ you are following a different way that pretends to be the good news na stajabu kwa kuwa mnawacha upesi 
Hivi yeye aliyewatia aliwaita katika neema ya Kristo na kugeukia injili ya namna nyingine. They are turning to another gospel. Wanageukia injili nyingine. And when they were doing that, they were abandoning they were abandoning God. Wanamuacha Mungu. There is a teaching that will take your faith focus from God to something else. Kuna mafunzo ambayo yatatoa imani yako kutoka kwa Mungu kupelekwa kwa kitu kingine. There is a teaching you can hear. Kuna mafunzo ambayo unaweza kusikia. And your faith will not be in Christ. Na imani yako haitakuwa katika Kristo. Your faith will be either in someone or in something. Imani yako itakuwa kwa mtu au kitu. That you believe if you walk around with a handkerchief. Kwa ukiamini ukitembea That you are bought from a man of God. Oh. Then you are preserved. Hapo umehifadhiwa sasa. Praise the Lord. Now your faith is not in Christ. Imani yako iko ndani ya Kristo. Who is your keeper? Ambaye who lives in you? Ambaye anaishi ndani yako. Your faith has turned its focus is on something now. Imani yako imezingatia kitu sasa. Or you walk around with a bottle of oil in your pocket. That's where your faith is. Kama unatembea na chupa au funga. If anything happens I splash it. Sema kitu kifanya na something will happen. Alafu kitu kitatendeka. Your faith is not in Christ who lives in you through the Holy Spirit. Imani yako iko ndani ya Kristo Yesu anaishi ndani yako kupitia roho takatifu. Your faith focus is now on something. Zingatio la imani yako sasa. Something you can hold and see. Kitu ambacho unaweza kushika na kuona. So I say you are turning away. Unageukia. From God. In terms of your our faith is in God. Imani yetu iko ndani ya Mungu. Let me tell you this. Wacha niseme hivi. Our faith is in God. Imani yetu iko ndani ya Mungu. Our faith is in Christ. Imani yetu iko ndani ya Kristo. Not even in the word. Hata sio ndani ya neno. Praise the Lord. Bwana sifiri. Our faith is in the one who spoke the word. Imani yetu ni kwa yule ambaye alinena neno. Now we do what he says because of our faith in the one who said it. Tunafanya yale aliyosema kupitia imani yetu kwa yule aliyesema. Uh, uh, let me help you to understand. Why do I act on the word of God? Because I have faith in the one who said it. I have faith in God who spoke the word. So I can respond to what he says. Because the people's faith is just he hangs on a scripture not on Christ. It's, it's like you are it's like you hold God but you have said but, but you have said you you're hanging on a scripture not on Christ. Our faith is in the Lord. Look at the writings of Paul. He says he 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 recommends commends their faith in God Kama and their love for one another. Maandiko ya Paulo pale anasema anawapongeza kwa imani yao kwa Mungu na upendo yao mmoja kwa mmoja. For you to do what I say is because you have faith in me. Ili ufanye ninachosema inamaanisha uko na imani ndani yako. For you to respond to my words because you have faith in me. If you don't have faith amini. in me, my words will have no meaning to you. Kama hauniamini maneno yangu atakuwa na maana kwako. Praise the Lord. Bwana that was a by the way. Ilikuwa. So I am sure that you are turning away from soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news but it's not. Na stajabu kwa kuwa mnamwacha upesi hivi yeye aliyewaita katika neema ya Kristo na kugeukia injili ya namna nyingine. Praise the Lord verse 7. Bwana sifiwe msari wa 7. But it is not but is not the good news at all. That, you see there are no two kinds of good news. There's only one kind of good news or gospel. Hakuna aina mbili ya habari njema, kuna habari njema moja tu ambayo ni njema. Anything else is counterfeit. Chochote kile ni gushi. You know we don't have two kinds of 1000 not. Hatuna aina mbili ya 1000. There's only one. Ni moja tu. And you don't need to learn the many counterfeit. You don't need to learn the many fake. The people are trying to learn how Satan operates. You don't need all that. Just learn about you and Christ. It will take care of the other things. If you know the original 1000 shilling note, you don't need to know all the fake ones. As, as soon as the fake one comes because you know the original, you know this is fake. So, there are no two kinds of gospel. There is only one gospel is about Jesus Christ. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning who? So the message is about who? Even the ones who are corrupting, they are corrupting it. Hata wale wanayaribu wanaiharibu our understanding about Christ. Ufahamu wetu juu ya Kristo. The people tell you you must lay down a sacrifice for God to do something. Na kuna watu wanakuambia unapaswa kuachilia dhabihu dhabihu ili Mungu afanye kitu. They are corrupting our understanding about Christ and what he has done for us. Wanaharibu ufahamu wetu juu ya Kristo na yale aliyotutendea. We don't pay for healing. Jesus was wounded for our healing. He paid for it already. Aulipi uponyaji Mungu alipiwa kwa ajili yetu. If we have that understanding that Jesus paid the price for healing. Kama uko na ufahamu ambao Yesu alilipia gharama ya uponyaji. Any counterfeit gospel that promotes sacrifices for healing, we not buy into it. Injili yoyote gushi hautaiamini. You won't give money for prayer for healing. Hautatoa pesa kwa ajili ya maombi ya Mungu. If his cancer is 100,000. Kama ni note, it's mild headache. 
it is uh, uh, just just 5000 can do kama ni kumwa na kichwa ni 1500 tu that's a corrupted version hiyo ni nakala iliyoharibiwa they twist the truth concerning christ that's why the lord wants you to know the truth ndio maana mungu anataka ujue kweli after you are saved baada ya kuokolewa concerning christ Kusiana he wants Christu. you to know the truth concerning what christ kuna pastor kujua kweli ambayo inahusiana na kristo the truth concern go and learn about business Kusidifu. but if you want to grow spiritual learn about who christ kukua kiroji funze kuhusu kristo yesu go and learn about how to succeed in this world tutaka kujifunza juu ya kufanya as a motivation talk but if you want to grow spiritually is the truth about christ tutaka kukua kironi ile kweli kuhusu who he is what he has done alietenda through his death and resurrection pitia kufa na kufa then you become a solid christian alafu unakuwa mkristo thabiti who cannot be deceived ambaye hawezi kudanganyika because he has known the truth kwa sababu ametambua kweli shout hallelujah pa sauti hallelujah pa shout hallelujah pa sauti hallelujah okay one one of us is not i think is not in the service mmoja wetu yuko katika came running to the church alikuja kukimbia katika because he stumbled on one man on television aliona mtu katika runinga she had a crisis alikuwa na shida and therefore know these people the way they present you can see you can see solution the way they are presenting wanavyojitambulisha and they have enough testimonies wako na shughuli za kutosha ambazo si za kweli so she, call this number she called mapiga namba hii on the other side so told, get a basin of water put your feet inside i'm going to pray mara. right now na uweke miguu yako ndani na kuombea everything will drop inside there you na so kila kitu cha put a feet there alieka miguu yake pale the man began to pray and pause and says now uh, you have your phone there now send it, send 9000 right now sema 1000 to 1000 right now 1000 right now to 1000 She sent to a wrong number. God helped her. Mungu alimsaidia akatuma kwa nambari ambayo si sawa. The man called, you have no send the money. Sema yatuma pesa. Don't joke with me. Usinichezee. Last week somebody ran mad. Now she can't come out. She told, now don't you can't even come out now. You're already inside. Sema uwezi toka sasa uko ndani. That's why she came out and ran to church. Sema na alitoka akakimbia kanisani. And I came and shared the gospel with her. Alikuja nikashiriki jili na yeye. And it, it cooled her down. Na ikamtuliza. And nothing evil has happened. Almost three months ago. <laughs> nothing has happened because the man was threatening. Hakuna chochote kilichotendeka. Said there is one woman who is walking naked in the market. Mad. Hakuna mtu ambaye anatembea uchi. So why would you get to that level? Unafikia Because you have not understood the truth about Christ and what he has done for us. Sababu hujatambua kweli kuhusu Kristo na yote aliyotutendea. So that's why spiritual growth is about discovering what has happened to you. Kukua kironi ile kutambua from the scriptures. Pitia maandiko. Renew your mind to it. Fanya nia upya nia yako kwa hilo. Let what the word says you are become who you think you are habitually. Wacha neno linavyosema kuhusu juu yako uwe hivyo kawaida what the world says has happened to you kila ambacho neno nasema imetendeka kwa chilia you become what you think about you continually iwe unavyowaza kujihusu wewe mwenyewe and when you get there unapofikia kiwango hicho you will have a new mindset utakuwa na nia mpya and that's your growth na huo ni mindset kwa. means that's where your mind is set ni yako inamaanisha ni yako imekitwa hapa nobody can confuse you again tuwezi kuchanganya tena your mind is set on the truth akili yako imekitwa katika kweli that god lives in me that Christ lives in me. I am a new creation. I am forgiven all my sins. I am righteous before God. Not by my works, but by my faith in the work of Christ. You become strong and stable. Unakuwa thabiti as a believer. Kama muumini. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Shout aloud amen. Why is Paul saying like this? That what I gave you earlier was the correct one. What they presented later that is taking your focus from God to something else. It's a corrupted version. Look at verse 11. We we'll read verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. Kwa maana ndugu zangu injili hiyo niliyohubiri nawajulisha ya kuwa sio namna ya kibinadamu. Other translation says I was not taught by anyone. Tafsiri nyingine inasema sikufunzwa na mtu mwingine. I did not receive it from anyone. Sikupokea toka kwa mtu. Verse 12. I received my message from no human source and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from who? Jesus Christ. Ndio mmekwambia 
hakuna mchungaji anaweza kubuni ujumbe ni apokee ujumbe praise the lord because this revelation has been given to the founding apostles and prophets not the current ones if a current one says have just received a new revelation and is not in this order don't mind them praise the lord this one they received was documented and sent to the churches. Praise the Lord. A direct revelation from Jesus Christ. That's the content that matures a believer in Christ. Now let's quickly look at the process. We say the process presents what we do with the content to produce the growth. Now that you have received revelation knowledge from the word of God what do we do with it that we may experience the change of mindset? You know, mindset change is not a spiritual thing. It, it happens in any field. Everyone, even unbelievers, have mindset. Uh, there is a standard process that, that changes your mind. Have you had a friend you agreed to do something the next day and then you get there and they say, I've changed my mind? I've, I've changed my mind. And there's nothing you can do. Their mind, something came and changed their mind. Their mind changed from the yesterday agreement to something else. Praise the Lord. May you have a change of mind. Every time you receive revelation knowledge, change your mind about you. If he's talking about you, he's talking about Christ. Change your mind. Set your mind on this new knowledge. On this truth. So there are three steps in this. There are no steps in a particular order, but uh, let's read Joshua 1 8. We are looking at the process. The process that turns the content into a change of mindset. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Bali atafakari maneno yake mchana na usiku. Upate kuangalia kutenda sawasawa na maneno yote aliyoandikwa humo. Maana ndipo utakapoifanikisha njia yako kisha ndipo utakapositawi sana. Are you three words to uh, describe the process? Tumia maneno matatu kueleza First one is mwenendo. talk. Kwanza ni unenaji. Number two is think. Ya pili ni kufikiria. And number three is do. Ya tatu ni tenda. It shall not depart from your mouth. That means you talk, you say it. Because when you say it, you are feeding your thoughts. What you keep saying will end up what you keep thinking. You know, you know when you have a problem and you want to sustain it, just keep talking about it. And if it's a bad one, it will paralyze you. Do you agree with me? If there is a problem, and then you keep talking about it, it doesn't get out of your thoughts. Because as you talk, you are feeding your mind. And if you keep feeding your mind in a particular direction, very soon your mind is getting renewed in that direction. So, so this book of the law, for us is not the book of the law. For us is the revelation knowledge about Christ and what he has done for us. For us, it's the revealed knowledge about Christ and what he has already done for us. There is what he has already done for us. Look, let, let me uh, look at Colossians chapter 2 before I come back here. I was to read that Colossians 2 from verse 10. To 15, New Living Translation. Very quickly, then you bring us back here. 
Now look at here. It says, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Na ninyi metimilika katika ye, alie kichwa cha enzi yote na mamlaka. Next verse. When you came to Christ, you are done what? How would you know that? What happened to you? Now, the, he's telling you what happened when you came to You don't know until you are taught and you find it. That when you came to Christ, something happened to you. But you can behave as if nothing happened. You can think as if nothing happened. It's just you. The former you before salvation. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised. It happened. Tell everybody it happened. Not the physical procedure, please. So I don't say me, I'm not circumcised. It's not the physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision. The cutting away of your sinful nature. So you do not have a sinful nature. Praise the Lord. You don't have a nature that drives you into sin. You may be tempted and sin, but you are not a sinner. What makes someone a sinner is the nature of sin. And that's what Jesus cut away from you. You need to know that. It already happened. Look at verse 12. Verse 12 says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. All those things happened. And with him you were raised to new life. It happened because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. It happened. Verse 13. We stop at 13. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. For he forgave how many of your sins? Has it happened? So you should know what happened. So that's what you are calling the revelation knowledge. You can't know it any other way. It was revealed to the founding apostles and prophets. So once you have the revelation knowledge, you are now engaging the process. And the process is, let it not depart from your mouth. You don't go telling people, speak to yourself. And by the way, you know you can speak to yourself sometimes without opening your mouth. No, that's a bad way of talking. Because it's not, it's not having scripture as its basis. Let it not depart from your mouth. Learn to talk to yourself the word of God. Speak it to yourself. No, that's the work you do after having heard. You are not taking the whole sermon and speaking it. Like you are, pre- you are preaching the sermon. It's the scriptures. You see, this revelation comes from scriptures. The scriptures that opens you to something. You lay hold of that scripture. We have read one, for example. You were dead because of your sins. That's former how we were. But now, we have been made alive. So I'm alive. I'm not dead. Dead means you are cut off from God. Alive means you are connected to God through Christ. Praise the Lord. So you don't let it depart from your mouth. And the step number two is meditate or think. To meditate means to focus your mind on something intentionally. Kutafakari ni kuzingatia I would like to call it thinking by choice. Do you know the mind has to be engaged? When somebody says think, he wants you to engage your mind intentionally. Focus your mind somewhere. Can't you not think? Engage your mind on this matter. Search out a solution in your mind. You think over it. Unaliwaza. And he says it's day and night all the time. Meditation can happen anytime, even when you're working. Kutafakari na kazi. The same way you can be working and you are thinking on the problems around you. By the way, the way you think determines how you will feel. When somebody puts their hand like this, and they begin to think on the many problems they have no solution for. Soon you can see tears coming down. 
Emotionally they already affected. So your thoughts will produce corresponding feelings. You are very sad. Check what you are thinking. You, can't, you see, there's no you can't be sad if you think on things that make people sad. To feel frustrated begins with thinking frustrating things. Praise the Lord. If something frustrating has happened, drop it there and move on. Now, meditate means you intentionally focus your mind on something. And you can meditate day and night. You can think, like, you know, you can say, now you are not talking, you are thinking, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I can't lack with the Lord being my shepherd. The, the statement in the Bible is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now you are just dwelling on that. He being my shepherd, lack is not my portion. Now maybe you are addressing a need. You are not thinking, where will I get money? Don't ask yourself those questions. Better think this way. So, God is my source. He's my shepherd. The money is coming. You will feel differently. You are going to feel differently. You are going to feel differently. You are to feel differently. You are going to feel differently. You are going to feel in a way that corresponds to how you are thinking. You are going to feel in a way that corresponds to how you are thinking. You are going to feel in a way that corresponds to how you are thinking. Praise the Lord. If God lives in you, you are not an ordinary person. Stop thinking that you are an ordinary person. Sit down and get a collection of this truth. That the fullness of God is in me. Christ lives in me. The ability of God is at work in me. The spirit of God himself dwells in me. I am not an ordinary person. He said the Lord is your helper. And he lives in you. My help is arising. My help is emerging. How you feel will follow how you are thinking. So to renew your mind to a specific knowledge you have received, you must make that truth what you are talking. It must be what you are talking. You are talking to yourself. I am a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. All things are new for me. Praise the Lord. I keep, if you keep on talking, it will keep on staying in your mind. If you keep on staying in your mind, it's going to set your mind. It's going to set your mind somewhere. It's going to establish a mindset. And with that mindset, it will shape your beliefs. I believe God lives in me. I can handle whatever comes my way. Because he said, I will not leave you. And I will not forsake you. But you can think differently. You can be thinking, I will not leave you. But you can think differently. Huyu bwana ni wakutafutwa sasa. Praise the Lord. You see now the way you are talking. The way you are talking. You are feeding your mind. And then you are setting your mind on, on somewhere that God is not with you. You have to look for him. Mungu alikutembelea na ukam disappoint na kaenda zake. Sasa lazima atafutwe. So you see now that's a wrong mindset. And that's a religious mindset. God does not visit. And if you think God is not with you, come I pray for you so he can come. Because he comes when you get born again and he stays. Jesus said, I will send you another helper. When he comes, he shall abide in you forever. Paul says, it's no longer I that live. But Christ lives in me. If it's no longer I that lives, who will go this Christ the healer, this Christ the overcomer, this Christ that no demon can, 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 can contend with, now lives in you and lives in me. Christo, what manner of man, manner of woman ought you to be? Wewe ni mtu wa sasa. What manner of life ought you to live? If Christ the overcomer Kama lives in you, 
Anaishi ndani yako. But it's possible that you know he lives in you. Lakini inawezekana ujua anaishi ndani yako. You know it but you don't think so. Unajua lakini hauwazi hivyo. You don't think so. Hauwazi hivyo. Praise the Lord. There are things you know but you don't think so. Kuna mambo unayojua lakini hauwazi hivyo. If they tell you somebody has passed on and you don't think so it won't affect you emotionally, isn't it? They are joking. If you take them for betrothal, some people think God is joking. When he says he lives in you. No, when you take some information for a joke, it does not affect you. Does it? Ukichukulia jambo ambayo ni mzaa hata haiku But when you take it seriously and embrace it, lakini ukichukulia kwa impact even in your emotions. Umakini inakuwa na mguso katika hisia yako. Talk it. Inene. Think it. Uiwaze. And do it. Na uitende. That doing means respond positively. Kutenda inamaanisha kuitikia sawa sawa. To the revelation knowledge you have received. Ufahamu wa ufunuo ambao umepokea. You know just thinking that now if you move to a new neighborhood ukisonga katika ujirani mpya you moved you moved to a new neighborhood unahamia katika ujirani mpya going there for the f- for the first time they show you the way ukienda pale kwa mara ya kwanza wanakuonyesha njia the second time you have to think what did you see here okay after here you turn there now after you turn here oh, was it here or the next turn now, you have to engage your mind actively until you get there unapaswa kuhusisha nia yako mpaka ufike mahali after a few months how do you get home baada ya miezi michache unafikaje your yumba? mind has been set nia yako imekitwa You can be discussing and you are, if you're a driver or you are walking you are, you can be talking and you are walking and you won't miss the way on, you won't miss the way scripturally I say you won't miss the way because your mind is set now kwa sababu nia yako imestawishwa sasa so continuous doing also sets your mind kuzidi kutenda inastawisha nia yako so there are just three things there are not too many mambo matatu tu simengi brothers and sisters just three things ndugu na dada ni mambo matatu talk it Kunena. Think it Kuwaza. and do it. Na kuitenda. There are things you will have nothing to do and there are things you will have to do something. Kuna mambo ambayo upasi kutenda na kuna mambo ambayo unafaa kutenda. So your mind can get renewed. Kuna nia yako inaweza kufanya upya. Focus as you think repetitively on that thing as you keep on thinking. That's meditation. Unapozidi kuwaza ambayo ni kutafakari. But talking will feed your mind. Lakini kunena italisha nia yako. And then you keep on thinking. Alafu utazidi kuwaza. You set your mind there. Unakita nia yako pale and then you act correspondingly. Alafu unatenda mwamba tano. Where it is possible and necessary. Pale ambapo inawezekana na inapofaa. The result is you will have a mindset. Matokeo ni kwamba utakuwa na nia which will shape your beliefs. Ambayo itaunda imani yako. And then they will drive your life. Alafu itasukuma maisha yako. You will be a Christ manner of person. Wewe utakuwa mtu wa aina ya Kristo. Daily will manifest a Christ manner of life. Kila siku utadhihirisha njia ya kuishi ya Kristo. You will resist some things of thinking. You know like some people now anything they anything comes they accept they receive everything coming. Wanapokea kila kitu kinachowajia. But this way your mind is set and something comes and you push it away. That's not my portion. I'm in Christ. My yoni sistemu yangu niko ndani ya Kristo. Such thing don't happen to me. Mambo haya nitendekei. Praise the Lord. You're going for an interview. Expect to be favored. You're a child of God. Katika mahojiano unapaswa kupata kibali. Don't say I don't know anyone there. Who do you need to know above God? Unapaswa kujua nani zaidi ya Mungu. He said Christ is the authority above all. Sema Kristo ni mamlaka juu ya wote. Praise the Lord. You are a highly favored person. Wewe una kibali sana. The one who commands all things yeah, is for you. Anaamuru yote yuko upande wake. No one say if God be for us. Mungu akiwa upande wake. Who can be against us? Anaweza kuwa dhidi yetu. No one can be against you successfully. Hakuna ambaye anaweza kukumba katika. If your mind is set on the right place. Kama nia yako imekitwa katika mambo ya sawa. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. So spiritual growth Kukua is a progressive ni mwenendo. Renewal of the believer's mind. Kufanywa upya kwa nia ya mumi. To spiritual truth or to revelation knowledge. Kwa ufahamu wa ufunuo. About Christ and what he has done. Kuhusu Kristo na yale aliyotenda. And the result of that is a new mindset. Alafu matokeo hayo ni nia mpya. That makes you a new manner of man. Ambayo inakufanya ukue mtu wa aina mpya. When Jesus rebuked the storm Mungu alipokemea dhoruba. The disciple says what manner of man is this? Wafuasi walisema huyu ni mtu wa aina gani? Tell your neighbor I'm a Jesus manner of man. Sema mimi ni mtu wa aina ya Kristo Yesu. We are the people who can stop storms. Sisi ni watu ambao tunaweza kusimamisha dhoruba. We are the ones who can lay hands on the sick and get healed. Watu tunaenda kuwekelea mikono wagonjwa na waweze kuponya. Praise the Lord. We are the forgiven ones. Sisi tulio tusamehewa. We are the righteous ones. Sisi ni wenye haki. We are the ones who ask and we are given. Sisi ndio tunaomba na tunapokea. We are the ones who can bind Satan. We are the ones who can bind demons. Tell about you mapepo. are the one who can cast out demons. Wewe unaweza kutoa mapepo. In case anaogopa mapepo, mbie wewe ni wale aina ya watu wanaweza kufunga mapepo na kuyatoa. 
Praise the Lord. Bwana Let sikiri. me finish with this. Wacha nimalizie kwa hili. The spiritual truth. Kweli za kiroho. You have been baptized into Christ. Umebatizwa ndani ya Kristo. That means you have been immersed into Christ. Sasa umetiwa ndani ya Kristo. The way you take a white piece of cloth Napoweka kitambaa cheupe and maybe you put it in red dye. Kwa rangi nyekundu. When you bring it out, ukiitoa, it has lost its former identity. Ime poteza ile tambulisho la awali. It carries a new identity that is related to where it was dipped. Inakuwa sasa ni kitu kipi ambacho kimeambatana pale ambayo kilitumbukizwa. So me and you we are identified with Christ. Mimi na wewe tumetambulishwa na Kristo. We are one with him. Si ni moja na Kristo. We live in him tunaishi ndani yake and he lives in us anaishi ndani yetu his power and abilities in us uwezo wake uko ndani yetu what manner of person ought you to be wewe unapaswa kuwa mtu wa aina gani if christ lives in you kama kristo anaishi ndani yako one with christ kama wewe ni moja na kristo what manner of person ought you to be unapaswa kuwa mtu wa aina gani how, how, how should you face life unapaswa kuangalia vipi maisha what kind of courage should be demonstrating daily unapaswa kudhihirisha mambo ya aina gani be saying i know who i am mimi najua nini nani Who he says I am is how I think. Is who I think I am. Ni vile ninavyowaza nilivyo. You are a Christ manner of man. Wewe ni mtu wa aina ya Kristo. Because you are in union with the Lord. Kwa sababu katika umoja na Bwana. This week may you enjoy divine favor every you appear. Ukashirike kibali cha kiungo katika jina lake. Where ordinary people are rejected. Watu wa kawaida wanapokataliwa. People in whom God lives are not ordinary people. Watu ambao Mungu anaishi ndani yao si watu wa kawaida. They will open doors for you. Wanafungua milango kwa ajili yao. They will accept you. Watakupokea. They will give you what you desire. Wanapata kila watu wanatamani. God said that we give Israel favor before the Egyptians. Kwa Mungu tutapa Israeli kibali juu ya wao. And whatever they ask of them it shall be given to them. Watuomba nitawapa. Have you applied somewhere it shall be given to you. Pale umeweka itatendeka. Praise the Lord. Rise up on your feet and shout I am a Christ manner of man. Kwa miguu yako unasema mimi ni mtu aina And I live an overcoming life. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am a new creation. I am born of God. I am born of the Spirit. Lift up your voice and give God thanks and bless his name. And appreciate him. Lift up your voice someone. I know who I am. Mimi najua nina. I am a Christ man of man. Mimi ni mtu aina ya Kristo. I am born of the spirit. Mezaliwa na roho. Christ lives in me. Kristo anaishi ndani yangu. Christ lives in me. Kristo anaishi ndani yangu. The spirit of God is in me. Roho wa Mungu huko ndani yangu. The fullness of God is in me. Utimilifu wa Mungu ndani yangu. I carry God everywhere I am. Mimi Mungu kila mahali nimeishi. I am victorious. Mimi ni mshindi. I am an overcomer in this life. I am highly favored in this life. And I am blessed because I'm in Christ. Nimebarikiwa kwa sababu niko ndani ya Kristo. I am blessed because I'm in Christ. Nimebarikiwa kwa sababu I am blessed because I'm one with Jesus Christ. Father, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory. In Jesus precious name. Shout aloud amen. Amen. Now as I was praying for you this night. You can clap for Jesus some more. Clap for Jesus some more. As I'm praying for you for this service. Nipokuwa nikiombea kwa ibada This revelation and understanding. Ufunuo huu na ufahamu huu. That anyone that is sick here and right now. Yote ambaye ni mgonjwa hapa. Can simply receive their healing. Anapokea uponyaji wao. Just though if there's someone here who is not born, born again can simply receive their salvation. Kama mtu ambaye azaliwa mara pili ambaye ufukea huko. Without guessing. Bila kubati. Without saying will I be saved? Nasema je nitakuelewa? If somebody is not born again. Kama mtu hajazaliwa mara pili. And they step out for prayer. Na kitokana mambo. They are surely getting born again. Anazaliwa mara ya pili. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Now if somebody is sick. Kama mtu ni mgonjwa body. Katika mwili wake. And they come out here. Na kikuja hapa. They are surely receiving their healing. Kwa hakika wanapokea uponyaji. Asi they are surely receiving their healing. Kwa hakika wanapokea uponyaji. They are surely receiving their healing. Kwa wanapokea uponyaji. Because Jesus Died for our sins. Christo, and we receive salvation. He was wounded for our healing. And therefore we can receive healing. Every pain must not go back home with you. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. Now somebody doesn't think so. Now that's where the problem is. So now you need to grow in that area. Until you think so. Now listen to me. How do I not have grown? What the Lord is saying I am is what I think I am. That's what I think I am. Yes. That's what I think. It's no longer I that live you cannot challenge me. It's Christ that is living in me. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. And his ability to work inside me. You can receive your healing right now. If I don't need to come forward. 
wherever you are, put your hand where there is a pain or where there is something. And I will make the prayer here because I'm not the healer. The healer is right inside you. Christ the healer is in you. He said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he that raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body. He will quicken your body by his spirit who lives in you. Not the one in the pastor. Not the spirit of God in the pastor, but the spirit of God that is in you. Romans 8, 11, he will quicken. That organ that is getting weak shall be quickened this morning. That system of your body that is getting weak shall be quickened in the name of Jesus. Every cell of your body, I command it to come alive with the life of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Every organ of your body, I command it to be quickened in the name of Jesus. Every system of your body, I command it to be quickened in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! The life giving spirit of God is in you. The spirit that makes things alive is in you. I command every pain and every spirit of pain behind that pain to live now in the name of Jesus. I command the pain to leave your body in the name of Jesus. I command that growth to shrink and to disappear in the name of Jesus. I command cancer cells to stop growing, to die in the name of Jesus. I command every bacteria that causes disease to die in the name of Jesus. And I command healing to be made manifest in that part of your body let him be made manifest in the name of Jesus as it is written so let it be for you in the name of Jesus as it is spoken so let it be for you in the name of Jesus I proclaim in the name of Jesus that you are healed you are made well you are made whole from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet in the name of Jesus Father we thank you Somebody say, I believe. I receive healing. In the name of Jesus. Say, I command the manifestation of my healing right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you glory and praise. I believe you are blessed by this ministry through the ministration of God's word. And you too can be a blessing to this ministry. Ambassador Chapel by giving offering to support the spreading of the true gospel of Christ through this ministry. And you can use the following details below to give towards supporting this ministry. And the Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name.